Hello and thank you for watching this video. Today we're going to continue our Easy Tune Getting Started series by looking at how you actually go about creating tuning packs. So we know already that uh, tuning packs are at the heart of everything that we do with Easy Tune. These CSV files and they're worked between the SCOM administrator and the domain experts. They can be pulled from our community store on GitHub. Also you can contribute to that as well. It's contributed to by our community of experts and EasyTune consumes them and sets their contents up as overrides in SCOM in sensibly named management packs. Uh, but we haven't actually talked about creating these tuning packs. So these, do you start with a blank CSV file and, and just go type or is there tooling? How, uh, you know, what are the approaches for capturing a tuning pack? So there are sort of two main ways of doing this uh, with EasyTune. The first way is from a management pack uh, imported into SCOM. So the MPs themselves are made up of various bits and pieces, so your monitors, rules and discoveries and whatnot. These are essentially um, the different types of workflow. These workflows contain metadata essentially, so things like the workflow name, uh, the type of workflow, so is it a, a monitor, rule or discovery, uh, a description, they have default values, is this discovery enabled or disabled, is this monitor, what's this monitor's threshold, that kind of thing. Um, and this data is what is captured to create tuning packs when you're creating a tuning pack from a management pack. And there's tooling in EasyTune to do this that I'll show you in a minute. The other way that you can do this is by capturing existing tuning from your SCOM management group. So in a typical SCOM management group, you might have a bunch of uh, groups set up uh, to contain objects. Let's say these are Windows servers distributed between uh, groups. You might have some objects that span groups as well. And uh, not, not even mentioning sort of tuning here, if we now layer tuning on top of this, we might have global tuning here. So this is tuning that affects all Windows servers unless overridden at another level. We might have groups that are tuned with specific overrides and we might have objects that are tuned um, as well. So with EasyTune uh, Enterprise, this is a feature of Enterprise, uh, you can capture the tuning for any one of these bits or bits and pieces. So let's say we want to capture Object D's tuning, we would capture it uh, with EasyTune, it's exported to a tuning pack and you'd see the result of, of uh, any tuning affecting Object D. Equally, if you were to do this for Object I, Object I doesn't have any direct tuning, but it's in Group 4, which does have tuning and the effect, obviously, of the global tuning. Um, so you'd see that captured. You can also capture tuning directly from a group. So if we just wanted to capture Group 4's tuning, we could do that. Um, and those are essentially the ways of creating tuning packs. So let's see it in action. So here we are in EasyTune again. Uh, we're, we have EasyTune Enterprise licensed here. Um, so, but the first feature I'm going to show you uh, of creating a tuning pack from a management pack is, is in free. Um, so if we go create tuning pack here, uh, you are asked to pick the management pack or management packs um, that you want to capture in a tuning pack. So you can multi-select as you see. Um, equally, you can select a single one. I'm going to pick these BizTalk ones uh, to create a tuning pack from. So we're going to select those and hit next. We're going to give our tuning pack a name. And we're going to say where this should uh, live. I'm going to stick it into our custom store. So here we are. Here is the uh, the opens tuning pack that was captured. So you have in here the management packs. Um, that are contained within the tuning pack and then the workflows themselves. So for those we have the workflow ID, uh, the workflow type, is it a discovery, is it a rule, etc. The display name, uh, the description, the override parameter name, which is is this expecting an enabled or disabled kind of thing. Uh, is this a timeout? How is this value used basically? We have our override parameter type, which basically says, is this workflow, uh, when you override it, is it expecting a Boolean, an integer, a string? And then we have the default values of this management pack. So all of that is captured for you. You also have your custom column, which you can uh, add whatever tuning you want to, as you've probably seen in, in other videos, just by typing in the fields. Let's put a few in here, just to illustrate the point. 
um, and that is the first way of capturing tuning packs. Let's save this. So the next thing uh, I'm going to show you is create a tuning pack by capturing the effective overrides from a specific object, um, which is one of the use cases in my slides from earlier. So we start with the object we want to capture tuning from. I'm going to select a Windows machine called Infra AD01. It is an Active Directory domain controller. We're going to select the Windows Server object here. And you can see now the list of management packs um, that are in effect for the selected object. If you don't want to capture tuning from all of them, you would simply remove the ones you don't care about here. Equally, you can delete the rows from the CSV file. Um, you give the tuning pack a name. So let's just do that. And you say where you want the thing to be stored and you hit create. So here we go, this is our tuning pack, now it's opened. You can see all the same bits and pieces as with any other tuning pack, uh, but there's some additional things in here. Um, so we have a new couple of columns here. We have override notes in column J and override source in column K. So these show you where we have actually captured overrides. If there were any notes on the original override, they're captured in this uh, column here and override source tells you the management pack in which the override that was captured came from. Um, so the other thing you'll see is that these fields aren't filled in for some of our, our workflows. We capture all of the workflows from the management packs that have some effect on the specific objects. So if you wanted to add additional tuning, you could do that just by, by adding more tuning to the CSV file. So I'm going to filter this is the good thing about it being uh, a CSV. I'm going to filter out the blanks so, it, so we can see what we've got. So here we go. This is uh, the list. So we've got a bunch of uh, a tuning here in this custom column. Aha, we've got some override notes from, from uh, previous people. My favorite one. I got too many alerts from this, the junior scum guy in May 2011. So some guy turned this off uh, a long time ago. Let's see, where did he store the overrides? Oh good, in the default management pack. Nothing nothing better than that. Uh, but at least now you can see where this tuning lives to start to unpick it, to figure out whether it's valid or not, whether you actually want this to be in effect. I mean, 20, 2011 was, wasn't just yesterday, so there's a, a fair chance this is no longer valid. And you may or may not have uh, expected to see it because of where it's stored. So being able to capture effective tuning is really, really valuable. The other thing that this is great for is migrating uh, between SCOM management groups. So if you're planning to upgrade to say SCOM 2019, uh, you would capture, you could capture your effective tuning from your old SCOM management group to see what's in effect. You could review it in the CSVs and you could prune out anything you weren't happy with before applying the tuning packs to your new SCOM management group. Um, also, let's say you've got tuning you're happy with for a specific object, and now you want to apply that tuning to a group. Rather than having to redo everything again, you can simply export it and reapply it using EasyTune. It's a really powerful feature of the product of EasyTune Enterprise. Okay, so next we're going to capture tuning from a group that has tuning applied to it. Uh, same idea as with a specific object, except we pick a group this time. My group is cleverly called group two. Here it is. And uh, we hit next. We see the list of management packs that have some uh, effect on this group. There are three and hit next. We're asked for a tuning pack name and where you want it to be stored. Okay, here we go. So this is uh, uh, a group to tuning pack and much like with the uh, tuning pack for the specific object, you've got all of the workflows that, ha that can have some effect uh, over the group uh, based on what's currently, what, what uh, monitoring is in place. And you can see the uh, custom tuning that we've captured. Now, if I just filter on this column, filter out the blanks, you get a feel for how much there is here that we've captured. Again, you've got those uh, columns J and K, the override notes and the override source columns. So you can see where this tuning is coming from. This all looks sensibly named, which is, is good. There's no oddities in here, um, but there we are. We have captured that tuning, 166 rows of overrides. 
Um, so uh, as with any other tuning pack, you can uh, change the scope of this tuning or use it uh, for SCOM management group migrations, etc. Finally, we have the ability to create a tuning pack from a class. So this is slightly different, the way this works. So you start by selecting a class. I'm going to pick SQL Server 2016 database. And let's see what we get. You're then shown a list of management packs that uh, are in effect. So you may get some oddities here you're not expecting where management packs have effect over the class you're capturing, you're capturing tuning from. Um, you're asked for a tuning pack name. And we'll put it in our custom store. Here we go. So now we've got all of the management packs and workflows that have effect on the class. Uh, we don't capture the uh, um, overrides themselves at the class level. Um, we uh, show you what's kind of possible. So this is a good place to start if you want to then start creating your own tuning packs because you can go and put your overrides into the custom column. And that is how we create tuning packs. Thank you for watching. So we learned how to uh, create tuning packs from a management pack. We learned how to create manage, uh, tuning packs from uh, a class, from a specific object or specific group. Uh, most of that functionality is in EasyTune Enterprise, apart from the ability to capture a tuning pack from a management pack. Thank you for watching.